looks like this. And Billy's penis is way too big for our mother's hips. So naturally, she defies this alternative. She comes a whole baby. And whoever greets us on the other end is kind enough to fill us in, and babies us pretty much how it's been ever since. Now the miracle of cot leaves a few issues to address, like say the half of us are periodically Zerwe deficient. So somebody's gotta go kill something while I make Zerwe too. I do it myself, but what, are you gonna get this thing his dumb song for versions to cry to? He says as soon as he gets back from the grind, we can switch. It's hard not to fall in love with something so horny. Ladies, post bedroom pot wasn't Zerwe, this is ass. <laughs> mushrooms in the world. Certain species of Amanita contain amanitin, a lethal toxin that kills by shutting down the liver and kidneys. Learning to recognize an Amanita is a key aspect of poisonous mushroom identification. Fortunately, they aren't too hard to spot if you know what you're looking for. Check out this page to help you identify poisonous mushrooms in the Amanita genus. Not every Amanita is dangerous, but some will kill. Of those, the majority of fatal mushroom poisonings worldwide are attributed to the aptly named Death Cap, or Amanitas. <laughs> Check out the page on the Death Cap for more information about this deadly mushroom and his cousin, the Destroying Angel. LBMs, little brown mushrooms, are everywhere. <sighs> It's no secret that all those little brown mushrooms on the ground look similar and are hard to identify. These types of mushrooms are nicknamed LBMs or little brown mushrooms. Many little brown mushrooms are hardless. Others will make you sick. A few contain the same emotoxins as certain emanitas. For this reason, it is best to avoid all little brown mushrooms when collecting for the table. A mistake could be deadly, so leave these complicated identifications to those with microscopes. This page goes into the poisonous little brown mushrooms, such as the deadly Galerina, in more detail. Simple. 
tree. Limbs divided like fingers splayed and clawed to the sky. They grew fruit in a matter of seconds. Now a 1,000 altering universe bursts of survey to hang you within my reach. The flesh in Billy's chest that was spilled over his bones marked up and wriggled as if it were begging for me to take my pick. I browsed the imposing tree selection of Zerwee 2s. Once is really too revealed itself to be post bed boot pop. This is really too.
1,000 alternate universe versions of Surly 2 hanging within my reach. The flesh in Billy's chest that once smiled over his bones, perked up and wriggled as if it were begging me to take my pick. I browsed the imposing tree selection of Surly 2s. One finally caught my eye. I picked it from the tree in a swoon. As its connection to the tree was severed, the entire tree was sucked back into Billy's body. I stood there in awe as the album that was once Surly 2 revealed itself to be a throbbing mass of living tissue. I held it to my eyes, and upon further inspection, I still didn't know what it was. I sat down for a moment, unable to process the day's events. I slipped the tissue, warm, wet, and pulsating into my shirt pocket. I fell asleep right there. I awoke to find Billy's corpse to be ash. Nothing without any evidence of a flame's presence. I was unable to pin down what could have happened. I remember the tissue in my shirt pocket, which at this point had gone entirely still. I took a peek inside, and I saw that it had eaten through my shirt and attached itself to me. I realized that Billy's burning was no flame's work, but merely him moving to his next vessel. I felt my life as in strain, and my vision grew tighter, and merely him began close. I knew my existence was coming to an end, so before I finally passed, I chose this document, this experience. When you find me, and the limb of a beast unfathomable explodes from my chest, and my ravaged tissues beg for your compliance, ignore me, and run as far away.